Hey guys, welcome to today's video where I'm gonna tell you what I think is the number one factor you should consider when buying a fishing kayak. Before I jump into today's video, I gotta thank the folks at Explore Clay for helping make this video possible. Listen, if you're looking for some awesome fishing, awesome food, and some awesome family fun, head over to plan your outdoor adventure at exploreclay.com. All right, so for years I've used this acronym SCRAPE. Stability, comfort, rigability, reliability, affordability, performance, and then everything else when I tell you about the things you should consider when you buy a fishing kayak. Stability being the number one thing. But there's a lot of stuff that goes into stability, so I wanna talk about that today because there's a lot of misconceptions out there. So I just wanna run through what you should consider when you consider the stability of a fishing kayak. There's two types of stability, primary stability or initial stability, and then secondary stability. And a lot of times, anglers buy fishing kayaks by doing what I call the sit and wiggle method. They sit down and go, Oh yeah, that feels real stable. Or you hear people say, it just feels real tippy, so therefore it's not stable. And I will tell you that you can have one and not the other, and you can have an initially stable kayak that will flip easy, and then you can have a kayak that's not initially stable that won't flip easy. So let's walk through that. Okay, so initial stability is how stable the kayak is when it's sitting in the water. But a lot of times, fishing kayaks have what's called chines, which is where the angle of the boat changes, and that line is called a chine. So as the water level is sitting right here, and let's say this is the side of the kayak and this is the chine, the more you lean in the water, the more boat goes in the water. Therefore, it's becoming progressively more stable the more you lean. So let's say you've got a round hole boat, right? The hole, the hole's nice and round, and when you sit down, it's got a lot of contact, so it feels initially stable. But as you lean down, you're actually getting to that tipping point faster. So a lot of times, a big wide boat with a round bottom will feel initially stable, but then when you lean a little bit, it'll shoot out from under you, kind of like if you step on one end of a skateboard. Uh, that's why canoes are nice and wide and have that initial stability, but if you lean a little bit, they'll squirt right out from under you. That's why you hear the saying, tippy canoe. Uh, and then a lot of canoes feel initially unstable and they don't have a lot of great secondary stability. Again, we're gonna get into that when I show you and demonstrate that uh, in this Bonafide SS127, which I think is the best balance of all things considered uh, on the market. And so, secondary stability. Secondary stability is that stability where you get to that point where it just sticks, okay? So as you lean, the more you lean, the more stable the boat gets. I would rather have a boat that is initially unstable and then has more secondary stability than a boat that has a lot of initial stability and poor secondary stability. If you can get a boat that has really great initial stability and great secondary stability, that's a really good combination. But usually what happens is, is designers take into account wetted surface. Wetted surface is what gives you uh, the coefficient of friction or a fancy you know, way for uh, us to describe drag. And drag is what makes boats slow. It's what makes it hard for them to perform well. So with the Bonafide SS127, when we were designing the boat, we tried to find that perfect balance between performance, maneuverability, tracking, and stability. And if you don't take all of those things into account, the boat's gonna suffer somewhere. So let me walk the boat out in the water and kind of give you an example uh, of what I'm talking about. So on this boat in particular, it has a catamaran style hull. And actually what I'll do is I'll spin it around so you can look at the back of it and get a good idea of what I'm talking about. And then when it's easier, I forgot to pull my anchor up. <laughs> So in the back of this boat, it's got what's called a catamaran style hull, which means there's two pontoons. And if you notice on the side of the boat, this is that chine that I was talking about. So if you sit in a Bonafide SS127 and you do the initial sit and wiggle test, it's gonna feel like it's got that initial instability. And when you first start kayak fishing, you'll be hyper aware of that. The more you kayak fish, you'll get to the point where you don't even feel initial instability and you really get to that edge and where you feel that secondary stability and that's all that'll matter to you. But for novice anglers and novice paddlers a lot of times, we tend to only buy the boat and we only tend to think of stability from the secondary stability standpoint. So when you notice here that I wiggle that boat, it kind of wiggles pretty easy, okay? The idea behind that is with the, a lot of boat up out of the water, when you're paddling it or when you're motorizing it, it's going to have better performance because it's got less wetted surface. But then when you lean to reach over and pick up a fish, or if you stand on one side or the other, you're not going to get that instability. So I'm going to jump in the boat and kind of demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about because honestly, that's really the only way to show exactly how this works. So 
So I'm gonna go ahead and reel my anchor in here. And I'm gonna hop in the boat and I'm gonna demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about. So, in a boat that is initially less stable, what'll happen is, I'm gonna need to use the paddle to demonstrate this, is you'll get this little bit of wiggle, okay? And a lot of people go, oh man, it's unstable. Well, you're talking about initial stability. And a lot of flat round bottom boats will have better initial stability so that when you wiggle, it doesn't wobble. But if you lean, once you get past that tipping point, the boat will shoot out from under you. It almost helps you flip because on the opposite side, more boats coming out of the water. So again, it's like stepping on that one of the skateboard. So I'm gonna demonstrate real quick with my paddle that when you have a boat that has a little bit less initial stability, it allows you to maneuver better, okay? It allows you to turn and edge and do some of those things. But when you lean out, if you notice here, it just hits that sticking point and it sticks. That's called edging, okay? Now in an, a boat that isn't stable, you'll wanna push with your paddle to kind of push yourself back up. But even with me, right around 275, maybe 280 pounds right now, once I lean over and it hits that point, I've got my head off center, but the boat sticks. I would much rather have an initially unstable boat with a lot of secondary stability. I can get down on here and just push, and literally this boat's not gonna go anywhere until I pass the point that the boat breaches or starts taking on water. That's secondary stability. And then when it comes to standing, when a lot of people stand up and they feel that initial instability, they're like, whoa, Man, that boat's not stable. But what you gotta remember is what you wanna do is preload the boat. You wanna put the weight on one side. And what I like to do is cast and preload the opposite side. That way if I set the hook, that side's already loaded, okay? If I miss the fish or if the line breaks, I'm not going from standing in the middle where it's tippy to over here until I hit that sticking point. So I like to put the weight on one hip and then I just like to change that out throughout the course of my fishing trip. What that does is a couple things. One, it keeps you from having that you know standing on one foot all day and it keeps you from engaging your core constantly by sitting there trying to act like you're on a balance board so i see the mistake that a lot of people make is they try to keep the boat centered oh and then it feels unstable because they're sitting in the middle of that initial instability so if you'll just put the weight on one foot get that boat loaded on the on the bona fide ss127 you can actually go up to the captain morgan because the boat is so stable and put that foot on the other side that just shows that that one side isn't going to go anywhere so when it comes to stability you need to consider two things initial stability and if you have a really strong initial stability make sure you have strong secondary stability but in a lot of cases if you have strong initial stability you're going to have a really slow boat that's a barge that doesn't handle well that doesn't maneuver well and it's going to feel like a slug in the water and you want that boat that's really easy to sit down in and really easy to pop right back up and that is where standability comes in. So for me, stability and standability go hand in hand. If you can't stand in it these days, it really is an efficient kayak. So guys, that's the breakdown of stability. Those are the things you need to take into account. In my next video, I'm gonna break down comfort uh, and then we'll roll through the rest of the scrape back and rim. But just remember, the number one thing you should consider is stability because if you don't feel comfortable and secure in your boat, you're not gonna feel comfortable and secure fishing. You're gonna be worried about flipping all day and you're not gonna have a good time. So hope you enjoyed this video and that's my take on stability.